It was the truth. What matters is not what people think is the truth. The truth is one thing. One way or another, it's reality. It can't be argued, it can't be changed, it can't be morphed to your opinion. It's the thing that permeates everything else. It's what's real. It's what's they really to there. They everybody with what's going on. You can see my breakdown, it's on Infowars.com. I shot at midnight while live last night. We're gonna try to upload these to our backup channels. But you have to understand, this is a war. And the media is spinning it like, oh, they're just blocking conspiracy theories of bullied kids. And then that's the cover everywhere for censorship. When I said a few days ago, this is 50 times anything we've ever seen. It's now over 100 times in my dead reckoning. It is thousands and thousands and thousands of sites that had been reinstated and they admitted it was wrong. It was an accident, bad employees. They just did it again. All the sites are being taken down again. You need to be your own YouTube sites. World War IV. This is a digital information war. The globalists are allied with radical Islam, flooding Europe, and destabilizing. They're allied with communist China, and with the globalist EU, and with Hollywood, and the powerful tech giants. And it's the American people, and Christians around the world, and sovereign folks in Latin America, Africa, Asia, you name it, want to fight back. The Russians are fighting back. The UK is trying to fight back, because this is the death knell if they do this. And again, first they censor you, then they demonize you so you can't respond, then they arrest you, then they kill you. So when they cut off your money and they cut off your speech in a digital world that's like cutting the electricity off, they are isolating everybody and having anti-foot with guns everywhere and bike locks threatening anyone that comes out on the street. This is a real authoritarian takeover. They mean it. The only reason Trump got in is there was a people in the government and the population that realized how bad things were. And this country is in a total emergency right now. We are in a total emergency. Again, the purge of the internet is here. And all the fools supporting this draconian anti-free speech garbage by labeling us evil and dehumanizing us, you're not leftist, you are fascist controlled by mega corporations who are tax exempt and you're useful idiots. And as soon as this purge is done, you'll be next. And they're going with pure algorithm to do nothing but feed government propaganda. They don't want people communicating, period. All the big globalist sites are getting rid of comments. They're all getting rid of everything. This is the model. This is it. And Obama was coming in with it. His so-called net neutrality was this. It gave the legal cover for them to discriminate. But now that's blowing up. We're simply pointing out that this is a Danger. This is the future predicted in 1949. 1984, often published as 1984, is a dystopian novel based in 1949, published in 1949 by English author George Orwell. The novel is set in Airstrip One, formerly Great Britain, a province of the superstate Oceania. Oceania. 
whose residents are victim of a perpetual war, omnipresent government surveillance, and public manipulation. Oceana's political ideology, euphemistically named social English socialism, shortened to Ingsoc in Newspeak, the government's invented language that will replace English or Old Speak is enforced by the privileged elite inner party via the thought police. The inner party persecutes individualism and independent thinking, which are regarded as thought crimes. The tyranny is ostensibly overseen by a mysterious leader known as Big Brother. That's where the term came from, peeps. This was all predicted by a man. By many people, this is just one. Big Brother who enjoys intense cult of personality. The party seeks power entirely for its own sake. It's not interested in the good of others. It is interested solely in power. The protagonist of the novel, Winston Smith, says they are right. There's no way to prove one side right. No way to prove the other side right. They constantly just throw all the information at the people until the people are confused as hell. This is called, in the modern era, fake news. CNN, MSNBC, um, all of the mainstream media organizations, which YouTubers have completely detailed and described their purposeful rise to power. The manipulation of the YouTube algorithm to show their content ahead of any other content in any topic that involves any other uh, opinion or guess or words on any new thing that happens in the world so when you search now you don't get the most popular video the best video you get their video how did people find the videos that helped them come to other ways of thinking in the past 10 years by typing it into youtube by typing it into the search result now they combat this they fight this they fight you finding the information you want to show you the information they want you to see and it's admitted it's admitted like it's a badge of honor just like i always quote democracy dies with a thunderous applause and it's true my friends it's so true Ever since the end of the 19th century, the problem of what to do with the surplus of consumption goods has been latent in industrial society. At present, when few human beings even have enough to eat, this problem is obviously not urgent and it might not have become so even if no artificial process of destruction has been at work. Ministry of Plenty rations and controls foods, goods, and domestic production. Every fiscal quarter, it publishes false claims of having raised the standard of living when it has, in fact, reduced rations, availability, and production. Does this sound familiar? Does it sound like anything that happens nowadays? It does, actually. The Ministry of Truth substantiates Ministry of Plenty's claims by revising historical records to report numbers currently su supporting the current increased rations. The Ministry of Truth controls information, news, entertainment, education, and the arts. They do now. They do now. When we can't get our opinion out, when our opinion is deleted, when it's squashed, when it's quashed, when it's muted, when it's demonetized, when it's censored, the only thing left is the mainstream opinion. CNN, MSNBC. Isn't it so crazy? I used to... Talk on YouTube saying that we come here to watch this stuff to escape the mainstream media, the commercials, and all the shit over on television. They they realized that they were losing it all. I never thought they'd come here and invade like they have, but they have invaded the internet. They've invaded our place, the place we view each other, the place where we spread our opinions. The place where the people gather, every place where the people gather. When people used to gather in front of the television set, they invaded the television set. They assaulted it with the rules. They assaulted it with uh, with their regulations. They made sure that nothing was shown on there that they didn't want. And what they don't want isn't anything like that you would think. They don't want to not show people violence because they show gratuitous violence on television. They don't want to hide the sexual nature of things from people because they show gratuitous grotesque grotesque sexuality on television they just don't want you to see open-minded well thought out production 
presentations on television. And when the internet became bigger than the television and all the mainstream media, Pootie Pie himself gets more views than every single news station put together I heard a few months ago. Now, I know that number changes and morphs and goes up and down. He beats out, I would guarantee you, we could easily prove he beats out uh, most of them, if not all. That's just one. This is where we come now. This is where we go. For them to invade. They used to be here, and before the algorithm was changed, they all had very little subscribers. I showed it on my channel. I documented it on my channel. At least my channel did that. My main channel at least documented the, the rise of the mainstream media on YouTube. Because this isn't YouTube anymore. YouTube used to be YouTube, as in them saying, it's YouTube. Hey, it's YouTube, guys. But now it's MSM tube. Now it's mainstream media tube. Go search something and see what comes up, man. I've shown it time and time and time again. I don't even have to show it now. Go search something and see if the most popular video, the most shared video, the most liked video comes up. Or see if it's just some shitty article, I'm sorry, some shitty reproduction of a CNN thing that they did on TV or, or ABC or, or, those, or CSNBC. Sometimes you might get a video in there that you see but as you you have to dig down really low to find anything and when you get going lower the views get higher it's backwards it's fucked it's been changed manipulated and screwed over and i'd like to know who they had to throw out of the coder room to because there was probably a dude sitting there like nah you're not you're not touching my algorithm they probably had to get rid of that guy right double think the keyword here is black white. Like so many new speak words, the word has two mutually contradictory meanings. Applied to an opponent, it means the habit of impudently claiming that black is white in contradiction of the plain facts. Applied to a party member, it means a loyal willingness to say that black is white when party discipline demands this. But it means also the ability to believe what black is white and more. To know that black is white and to forget that one has ever been believed the contrary. This demands a continuous alteration of the past. Made possible by the system of thought which really embraces all the rest. And which is known in Newspeak as doublethink. Doublethink is basically the power of holding two contradictory beliefs in one's mind simultaneously and accepting both of them. It's called fake news, peeps. That's what it's called, fake news. Political geography. Three perpetually warring totalitarian superstates control the world. Oceania, its core territories, the Western Hemisphere, the British Isles, Australasia, Polynesia, and Southern Africa. Eurasia, its core territories, continental Europe and Russia, including Siberia. East Asia, its core territories, China, Japan, Korea, and Indochina. The perpetual war is fought for the control of disputed areas lying between the frontiers of the superstates, which forms a rough par parallelogram with its corners at Tangier, Brazilville, Brazzaville, Darwin, and Hong Kong, and Northern Africa, the Middle East, India, and Indonesia are where the superstates capture and use labor. Fighting also takes place between Eurasia and East Asia in Manchuria. Mongolia and Central Asia. All three powers battle one another over various Atlantic and Pacific islands. Goldstein's book, The Theory and Practice of Oligarchical Collectivism, explains that superstate ideologies are alike and that the public's ignorance of this fact is imperative so that they might continue believing in the destability of the opposing ideologies. The only reference to the exterior world exterior world for the Ocean and citizenry, the outer party and the proles, are Ministry of Truth maps and propaganda to ensure their belief in the war. This, my friends, is the now.
Look at what we have going on. Look at this. Look at the superpowers that we have out there. What they are trying to do and accomplish. Where they constantly always go. They're always fighting at the same areas. They're always trying to take the same areas away. You know, we're always having the same kind of things happen in one small little area. It's almost like the superpowers are fighting for the same um, small tiny place always contesting the small place, needing the war to keep the economic machine running, right? And censorship. A major theme of 1984 is censorship, especially in the Ministry of Truth, where photographs are modified and public archives rewritten to rid them of unpersons, persons who are erased from history by the party. On the telescreens, Figures for all types of production are grossly exaggerated or simply invented to indicate an ever-growing economy when the reality is the opposite. One small example of the endless censorship is Winston being charged with the task of eliminating a reference to an unperson in a newspaper article. He proceeds to write an article about Comrade Aug Gilvey a made-up party member who displayed great heroism by leaping into the sea from a helicopter so that the dispatches he was carrying would not fall into enemy hands. Surveillance The inhabitants of Oceana, particularly the outer party members, have no real privacy. Many of them live in apartments equipped with two-way telescreens so that they may be watched or listened to at any time. What's that? What's a smart TV do? Proven. What's a computer do? The webcam's built into them. That's why they let us have the technology in our homes like they do. Or else it'd be so expensive none of us could afford it. You know, that's why they made it affordable. Not because it made it helped them. It doesn't help them to let us have all this um, all these electronics and all this technology. I mean, they could have just left us with some old crappy computers and we would have never known the difference, right? They gave it to us for the sole purpose of what it does. That's why they're censoring it now. Or else they wouldn't. So that they may be watched or listened to at any time. Similar telescreens are found at workstations and in public places, along with hidden microphones. Written correspondence is routinely opened and read by the government before it's delivered. The Thought Police employ undercover agents who pose as normal citizens and report any person with subversive tendencies. Children are encouraged to report suspicious people to the government, and some denounce their parents. Citizens are controlled, and the smallest sign of rebellion, even something so small as facial expression, can result in immediate arrest and imprisonment. Thus, citizens, particularly party members, are compelled to be obedient. The principle of Newspeak is an academic essay appended to the novel. It describes the development of Newspeak, the party's minimalist artificial language meant to ideologically align thought and action with the principles of IGSOC by making all other modes of thought impossible. A linguistic theory about how language may direct thought is the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis. Whether or not Newspeak Appendix implies a hopeful end to 1984 remains a critical debate, as it is in standard English and refers to Newspeak, Ingsoc, the party, etc. And in the past tense, relative to our own, the Newspeak vocabulary was tiny, and new ways of reducing it were constantly being devised. Some critics claim that for the essay's author, both Newspeak and the totalitarian government are in the past. 1984 uses themes from the life from life in the Soviet Union and wartime life in Great Britain as sources for many of its motifs. Sometime at an unspecified date after the first American publication of the book, producer Sidney Sheldon wrote to Orwell interested in adapting the novel to the Broadway stage. Orwell sold the American stage rights to Sheldon, explaining that his basic goal with 1984 was imagining the consequences of Stalinist government ruling British society. 1984 was based chiefly on communism because that is the dominant form of totalitarianism. But I was trying to chiefly imagine what communism would be like 
if it were firmly rooted in the English-speaking countries and was no longer a mere extension of the Russian Foreign Office. What do you think, my friends? Do you think that we are starting to see more and more and more of this, this prophetic kind of thing where this man wrote this book in 49 detailing you know, the horrors that he saw from one communist state that went to total war, right? And said to himself, what happens if English-speaking countries adapt that same method of ideology? And it almost seems like now, 60, 70, 60, 70, 70 years later, that it is coming true. Because look, when you start to tell everybody what facts are, when you start to tell them what's really going on out there, when you censor everyone that has a different opinion, you can now, after you gain complete grasp of it, all you gotta do is start changing the past a little bit here and there and here. And what's another conspiracy theory? That the past has been changed over and over and over again. Because when you change one thing, other things have to change too, right? Every conspiracy can be linked together and show more of another. And I do think that if we continue on like this, we're just, we're going to be right where this book says it's going. So look at this picture right here. This is an example of an unperson. Nikolai Yezov walking with Stalin in the top photo from the mid-30s. Following his execution in 1940, Yezov was edited out of the photo by Soviet censors. Yezov became an unperson. It's not like this hasn't been done in the past. So what would happen when somebody finds this? They scream conspiracy theory, conspiracy theorist. But it was the truth. It was the truth. What matters is not what people think is the truth. The truth is one thing. One way or another, it's reality. It can't be argued, it can't be changed, it can't be morphed to your opinion. It's the thing that permeates everything else. It's what's real. It's what's really there. It's the thing that permeates everything else. It's what's real. It's what's really there. 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 But it was the truth. But it was the truth. But it was the truth. It was the truth. What matters is not what people think is the truth. The truth is one thing. One way or another, it's reality. It can't be argued, it can't be changed, it can't be morphed to your opinion. It's the thing that permeates everything else. It's what's real. It's what's really there. But it was the truth.